It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Cannabis sales are softening, operators are going under, layoffs are ramping up, and retailers are closing their doors, financing is drying up, and the list goes on. In this report of Headset, we're going to describe the declining growth in recent cannabis sales, all the trends and information you need to know, all of that coming up. Only 14% of all products in the U.S. that were launched since January 2020 are still on the market. So we take a look at U.S. flower products. Uh, the median lifespan is only 100 days, while the lifespan of beverages is about 315. When you look at strain-focused categories like flower, pre-rolls, concentrates, vape pens, they all tend to have a slightly shorter product life, life cycle or lifespan due to the cyclical nature of harvest and strain popularity. Blue, D Blue Dream, for example, used to be number one. Don't even really see that anymore. And when you do, definitely not the Blue Dream that it used to be. When you look at the non-inhalables like edibles, beverages, topicals, capsules, tinctures, sublinguals, only 43% of those products launched since the beginning of 2020 are still on the market. That means that more than half of those products failed at some point in the last two and a half years, a full third of products from those categories never sold uh, for more than 180 days. Now, let's take a look at the rise and fall of cannabis sales, starting with the COVID boom. It's a rising cannabis sales during the pandemic, most notably edibles. So we're going to focus on the adult use cannabis market, Colorado, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington, because there's far fewer net store changes in those markets as opposed to those new emerging markets. If we were to compare Michigan and Illinois, those numbers would get a little bit more skewed because of the, the new uh, openings and whatnot. Those legacy markets or the uh, more mature markets, I would even call them the distressed markets in the West Coast, they're a better example of the sales patterns. So we can take a look at those. Uh, and on this graph, we see monthly sales of Colorado and Nevada, Oregon and Washington before and during the first year and a half of the, the COVID episode. We can see that sales exploded in the first six months of the pandemic. Why? People were staying at home. They wanted edibles. They had government stimulus checks. They had all of these reasons to go out and um, celebrate and, and hang out. Uh, Colorado, for example, their total adult cannabis sales grew by a massive 63% between February and July of that year. In comparison, the 2019 sales only grew by 43. So it was an additional 50% growth. Um, sales remain elevated compared to previous years throughout the rest of 2020 and continue to grow throughout the first half of 2021. And in the second half, that relationship with the pandemic started to change. That's when the uh, stimulus checks stopped. That's when inflation really started to hit. And that's when the idea that this is going to be long term started to set in. So as the COVID impact hit day to day lives, cannabis sales started to slow the longer that that was impacted. Stimulus checks faded, like I mentioned. Uh, unemployment benefits ended. Moratoriums on uh, rent and eviction stopped. Things started going back to normal. So a lot of these folks were faced with more options and how are they going to spend their time and money. Uh, if they didn't have to spend it on rent uh, or gas or all of these things because of the stay at home, uh, all of a sudden, that money that was going to cannabis went away as people are trying to make decisions on, do I get gas, food, or cannabis? And I think it's pretty obvious people are picking food and then gas and whatever else they can get. There's been some negative year-over-year -year growth. So on this graph, we can see that for um, these older markets, there was a surge in positive growth in the second quarter of 2020 a continuous 20 to 40% year-over-year growth until around early 2021. 
And those were double what they were in 2019. So at some point it was going to stop. Should have been obvious to a lot of people that this wasn't going to be normal in an existing market. Kind of hard when you're in a new emerging market. Hard to tell what's new, what's not. Um, prices are always expensive. People never think they're going to come down, but they always do. The growth that we saw through the pandemic was influenced by the shift in consumer behavior at large, right? So when we saw um, during the second quarter of 2021, when that growth began to plummet and sales stabilized by July, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington were already experiencing that negative year-over-year growth and Nevada, California joined right after that. And that whiplash in those older markets are now uh, going to be seen on all of these graphs and been felt by everybody. The average month year-over-year sales growth from three different time periods, that's pre-COVID, peak COVID, and then more recently, there's a distinct difference in each of those time periods. Colorado, Oregon, and Washington each saw a drastic increase in monthly sales growth during the peak, and then there's been an average year-over-year retraction of roughly 10% since June of 2021. And those declines are significant. So let's take a look at some longer term trends in order to gain an understanding of what that bigger picture might look at. Time with the removing COVID from the picture shows monthly sales totals across the US market similar to the first couple of graphs. There's one big difference though. All the sales data from July or from February of 2020 uh, and February 2022 has been removed. So if cannabis sales uh, disappeared for those two years, this is what would be left. With all that data gone, you'll notice a clear upward trend from early 2020 to early 2022. So while it feels like cannabis sales have been collapsing, what we can see is that over the long haul, it's actually grown, but removing some of the hyperbole or excessive sales and smoothing those numbers out, we can see that there's more of a steady incline With this graph, there's some positivity in long-term cannabis sales trends when you compare June of 2019, which was pre-COVID, to June of 2022 and see that sales in every market has actually grown. So Colorado's got the softest growth at 4% over that time period, but it's still growth. Oregon, despite experiencing a 20% decline in monthly sales over the past year, they're still up 25% in the past three years. So while sales declines of recent months are no doubt impacting operations in the industry, it's important to keep an eye on the long-term trends. So it's evident that the market is correcting to a pre-COVID normal and sales should stabilize sometime soon. So this graph shows a total basket volume and average basket size by month in Colorado over the past two and a half years. So here we can see why sales surged so quickly early in the pandemic. Both basket volume and basket size shot through the roof. Basket size stayed a lot higher in the pre-pandemic levels through late 2020 and early 2021, while the basket volume underwent an unusual seasonal shift, albeit higher total than ever before. So from June of 2021 to June of 2022, total basket volume decreased by 7%, while average basket size decreased by 10 so that's indicating that this this spend per trip is having a slightly larger effect on Colorado's cannabis totals than the total number of customers walking into the store. Looking at cannabis flower price is a key indicator uh, to give us kind of some sales and pricing trends. The largest category in any state, using that as kind of a lead indicator of the status on the market. You can see that the total volume of flowers sold in Colorado grew and peaked quickly in July of 2020. And since the fourth quarter of 2020, total flower volume has been steady. So the average price per gram of flower products has been less steady. So that's due to a demand increase. The average price of flower increase um, is right around $5. Um, and then since the summer of 2021, the price of flower in Colorado has been dropping, decreasing by nearly a full third from $5 in July of 2021 to $3.38 in June of 2022, probably caused by increasing competition, excess supply, consumer demand, inflation. People are definitely choosing to, um, they're not choosing, they're being forced to make uh, decisions on what they're able to buy and afford. So 
Sales have been declining in recent months, but uh, taking a look at longer term, longer term trends, we can find that uh, markets have been growing, adding optimistic to the outlook, but not the growth patterns. Growth patterns aren't as strong as they were, but it is still a steady trend. So with that in mind, I don't think prices are going to drop, uh, continue to drop too much, but they will uh, because when faced with the other choices uh, or decisions of, of having to buy food, uh, they're going to have to keep coming down. Um, cannabis is one of those things where prices are coming down when everything else is going up. So at some point, maybe we'll see inflationary pressure drive prices back up. Uh, and then that again is going to start messing around with the demand until we find some equilibrium. In order to find what that's going to be like, you're just going to have to come back to the talking head and find out. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.